be extremely brief uh, due to the hour um, and quite sure that uh, the extra discussion that was had uh, after each of the talks is much more beneficial and insightful than anything I would have been able to summarize. Um, this is my first meeting. It's been awesome. I want to thank Luca for putting this together. Um, one of the things that was unique for me is how through each of the sessions there was a wonderful blend of, of clinical, mm -hmm. translational, and basic science. And, and that's very different from what we see at our big Congress meetings. Um, that maybe that's how this always happens, maybe not, but as Martin looking forward, um, I thought it was, worked extremely well uh, for meetings. One of the themes that we heard a lot of was heterogeneity. Um, in the talks that I'll briefly summarize or go over, that came up as well. And we heard about uh, heterogeneity at the local level from Annie with, with microdissection showing uh, differential presence of, of a new um, matrix metalloproteinase. At a much more macroscopic level, Vincent showed us differences in clinical characteristics between uh, patients with pulmonary fibrosis and the presence or absence of emphysema and how their physiology, how their outcomes differed. And then we saw very eloquent work with micro CT, um, how you could look at the whole uh, microenvironment of the lung and correlate that to histology. And we're starting to see that uh, in the patients, uh, the fibrogen poster looking at changes in CT scan over short periods of time uh, in patients that are treated with an agent. And I think that as we look forward over the years, or maybe I hope as we look forward to the years, CT, which has always had the advantage of being able to sample the entire lung and see everything that's going on, that will actually be able to get CT technology that will be microscopic enough uh, that we can see in animal models over time how these things are changing, and then hopefully translate that into human studies where we might be able to use CT scan as a type of biomarker in and of itself to get very quick readout in these therapeutic trials of what is changing, does it clinically meaningful, does the same changes that we see in the animal that we would expect to see in a human, are they there? Because we can't do serial biopsies on humans. We can't even do serial biopsies in, in animal models, but we can have multiple animals. But maybe CT will give us that link between the animal models and the human models to allow us to see signals very quickly. So I'll stop there, and I want to thank Luca again and the organizers for uh, inviting me. Yes, first of all, I would like also to, to congratulate Luca for this wonderful meeting. And I think that we <coughs> listened listen today two or three very different things. One of them is related with the stem cells and um, that we don't know, well, I don't know if these cells are maybe part of the pathogenesis of some fibrotic disorders or are a window, an opportunity for therapeutic approaches. And we listened to uh, important work today, one of them from Luis Ortiz regarding the, uh, the secretome or exosomes that can be uptake by cells, in this case by macrophages, and induce a profound change in the behavior of the macrophages. And it seems that this is related with the microRNAs that these exosomes uh, carry out. This is, I think that this is an important information that Luis gave us today, and Mauricio, that is one of the pioneers of the aging studies in, in the area, uh, gave also an important talk regarding that the, that the stem cells in the, in the IPF patients seems to have some kind of deterioration and uh, similar to old mice and um, I think that um, um, one surprising thing that uh, Mauricio showed us is that uh, age affect the migration of stem cells and others, uh, bone marrow stem cells, but has nothing to do with the movement of the fibrocyte. I think that is an interesting thing that we should follow. And uh, <clears throat> Jack Goldie, one of the parents of this symposium, um, present a, a very good, like when he was young, a very provocative work 
on the an important the only work that in this symposium dealing with the mechanotransduction biopathology or something like that, in which the matrix is very important, the stiff matrix in the lungs, in the fibrotic lungs, is very important in the, uh, in the behavior of the fibroblast and perhaps all the cells, including the epithelial cells, of course. And finally, Bethany present a, a very good work, as usual, about periostin that uh, is increasing the IPF patient, uh, seems to be related with the poor outcome, and uh, importantly for the aging problem that increase in aged mice, and seem to have a potent profibrotic effect. So I think that all the work that we listen today were very important for our knowledge and wonderful in general. Thank you.